Welcome back, besties. Carissa here again. We are about to jump into chapter one of Darlene Shack's book, The Seven Virtues of a Proverbs 31 Woman. And the topic of the Bible study this week is inner beauty, which I am very excited to talk about. To start off, I wanted to share a quote from the very opening page of the chapter. And it says this, Satan takes advantage of our insecurities by trying to convince us that we are not good enough or that we'll never measure up. His objective is to knock us down and to keep us from being the person that God created us to be. By keeping us in bondage to comparison and insecurity, he undermines our confidence and stunts our growth. These lies go against the truth of who we are in Christ, not to mention the fact that they take our eyes off the things that are more important to God. The Bible says, 1 Peter 3, verse 3 to 4, your beauty should not come from outward adornments, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. This verse really does reveal to me that it is truly the enemy's tactic to just get our eyes off of Christ and onto ourselves and to even worship ourselves. and and to become consumed with something that is actually not the focus of what God wants us to live for. And as I had mentioned last week, you know, we are meant to keep our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. And when we become so consumed with our image, it's very, very difficult to do that. I thought I would share a quick story of someone that I found just so beautiful from the inside out. And this story goes way back when I was a camp counselor at a Bible, at a Bible, I wanna say Bible school, no, at a Bible camp. I was a camp counselor at a Bible camp. And uh, wow, this girl, we led a cabin together and her character just completely blew me away day after day. She just served and served and served. She was selfless, she was humble, she was funny, she wasn't insecure, she was confident, she was willing to be silly to put herself out there. But then she never needed the attention. She never needed acknowledgement. She was just, and she loved the Lord. Like you could just see it, it just emulated. And by the end of the week, we were cleaning our cabin after the campers had left. And I just felt this push from God to tell her like, I just think you're so beautiful. So I did. And she just turned around and looked at me and she was like, Carissa, I've been struggling with feeling uh, jealousy towards you all week. And I was blown away because I said, you're a character has astonished me this week. It is so beautiful. And I said, you know, I, I have met people before that are gorgeous on the outside and then I get to know who they are and that beauty that I was first impressed with just fades away because of how ugly their character is, how selfish and conceited that person is. And I said, you have been the opposite this week. I thought you were beautiful from day one, but you have just continued to uh, inspire me and so thank you for that and it just goes to show how truly inner beauty is what is genuinely attractive in somebody not the outward appearance which is the thing that of course the enemy gets us to focus so much on so going through the Bible there are so many attributes that we come across that God describes as beautiful and as virtuous and as good character and I just was blown away how Jesus really is the example of a beautiful spirit, of someone that has humility and um, that quiet spirit. Like I think of this verse actually that she has here in the book and, and it says in Philippians 2, 5 to 8, in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. I'm sorry, this makes me emotional, this verse, because it is so powerful. And that picture of Jesus washing the feet of his betrayer, it's just like, you know, if there's ever something in life that I can use to my own advantage, I usually do. <laughs> It's just my nature, right? It's our sin nature, it's that flesh, it's that desire for gratification that we just so badly want and that worship we want from other people. And wow, to see God, the one who truly deserves to be worshiped, 
be the one that humbles himself before man and and even just thinking about the fact that he came as a baby you know like all of the ways that he humbled himself and came down from heaven I don't think we'll ever truly know the cost that he paid until we have stepped into heaven for ourselves and seen what he gave up to walk this earth with us what a beautiful I really enjoyed refamiliarizing myself with the story of Ruth and seeing the beauty in her character as well and uh, I love that it is her character that attracts Boaz and God also acknowledges her good character and all the single ladies I just want you to notice that it's her character that attracted him so the bait you use determines the catch that you're gonna get so use bait of a good character of a beautiful character I'll share a quote from page 17 and she writes these unrealistic beauty standards are damaging to young women today as they perpetuate the belief that everyone must look a certain way, but it does not address the importance of one's character. And I just want to say, I've had the, the privilege of being around the world and um, been to Africa, Asia, and South America, and the standard of beauty changes. Like it really, really is subjective. But what does not change is the fact that good character is attractive anywhere in the world. If you're willing to be humble, admit that you're wrong, you know, oh, come before people in humility like that and in, in kindness and with virtue, wow, like everybody around the world appreciates that. It's beautiful everywhere. That is universal. But I thought I'd also share a very funny story from being in Africa because this would never happen in the States and it just opens our eyes to how much beauty really is an opinion. And that is... Um, I went to Africa and uh, I was just a skinny little thing when I went and after a couple of months I started to gain quite a bit of weight because all you eat is carbs and one of my African friends after about two months she came running at me just with this beaming smile on her face and she came to me I thought she was gonna give me a hug but she just like grabbed like my love handles <laughs> like my belly and she was like Carissa or she actually said Kisachi, which is my African name. She said, you are looking so big and beautiful these days. And I had to laugh because that is the standard of beautiful there. It is bigger, the bigger the better. And I remember them trying to force feed me more food when I got there because they were like, you really need to add some <laughs> something to your bones here. And it, it shows the picture that beauty really is an opinion. It really is subjective. And and if beauty is somebody's opinion and I'm gonna live up to someone's opinion, then the only one that matters is Christ. And that is the opinion that I am going to choose to submit to and choose to live up to and choose to hold myself to. So I will, I will admit, along with I'm sure most of you women, this can be a struggle. It has been a struggle for me. I, I like to focus on my outward appearance. Um, and, I, and I struggle with people pleasing and I, care about what people think of me and I am tempted to worship myself and when those moments really get a hold of me I take a moment to think about and I often will just close my eyes and feel free to do this too but I'll close my eyes and think about that glorious day when I will stand before my maker in heaven sorry it makes me emotional and uh, my life will be before us and we'll see I'll see all of the moments that I wasted, that I spent consumed with myself, consumed with my appearance, consumed with pleasing others, living that double-minded life and wanting to please people, wanting to worship myself. And the only thing I will think in that moment is what a waste, what a waste of time, what a waste of energy, and what a waste of my emotions. What could I have done with that time? And realigning myself with that eternal perspective really, really helps me forget the worries and the consumptions and the anxieties that I can have in the moment about what other people are thinking about me. And I hope that helps you too. In closing, I will share one more quote from the book. And she writes, character is more important than any clothing or makeup we'll ever put on. Because inner beauty has the power to touch the lives of those around us in profound and meaningful ways. Just like Ruth. Her character touched her mother-in-law in a meaningful, beautiful way. 
and and I want my life to do that for other people too and I want that for you guys as well and so that is the challenge this week to get our eyes on Christ the author and perfecter of our faith to remember what true beauty is and to realign ourselves with him when we get consumed with ourselves so I hope you guys enjoyed that and until next week I will see you later bye for now